Hey, welcome back to Mike's Italian Grand Adventure. And as you might have guessed from my surroundings, I'm back in Colorado, back in my house. And uh, it feels incredible to be back. Uh, although I have been kind of fighting a cold for the last week, I've been back a little over a week and just starting to feel better today. So you might hear it in my voice a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's beautiful when I left, there was nothing growing and now there's grass and wildflowers and all the scrub oak have leaves on them. So it's really, really beautiful. And right now I happen to be standing next to the namesake for my, uh, my house. As you can tell, I like to name everything like Sasha the motorcycle, Sasha the Suzuki uh, for my road trip. And I have names for lots of stuff, but my uh, property here is kind of hidden in the woods. So I like to call it the crooked tree hideout. And this is the crooked tree. So uh, really beautiful out here, um, sunny days. Uh, it's the monsoon season, which a lot of people might not know Colorado has a monsoon season. It's usually from like mid-June through August. Uh, it hasn't been real reliable for the last four or five years, but um, we've been getting storms every afternoon and that's one of the reasons why it's so green up here. Usually it's quite dry. So uh, anyway, welcome back. Uh, this is the second property of the Piedmont property collection. <music> Okay, so before I show you the second property, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, some things that have been going on in Italy. Uh, this past week, there was some severe flooding uh, in uh, Emilia Romano, which is kind of where um, Bologna is the capital, kind of in the middle uh, north. And then uh, also in Piemonte or Piedmont, which is the region of the 20, um, I visited 18. Uh, of the 20 regions, that's the one that I'm kind of focused on now looking for property. So, um, but uh, if you remember, Piedmont is in the northwest corner of Italy uh, from your perspective. In the west is the border with France and in the top border of Switzerland. And uh, so part of it is in the Alps in the west and the north. And that's where the flooding was this past week. And some of the videos I saw in pictures were just unbelievable. I couldn't even believe how much water is coming out. but. Um, the properties that I'm looking at and that you, you looked at last week and that you'll see this week and next week, um, those are kind of in the bottom. So when you get down to the base of the Alps, there's a big, huge flat area, a huge agricultural area. Uh, and then there's some hill towns, there's kind of a ridge down the middle of it. And there's some uh, really spectacular areas around there. And that's what I really liked a lot when I was um, traveling. So that's where these properties are at. So I'm not concerned about flooding there so much. But when I was traveling around Italy, uh, it was very much on my mind. In fact, uh, one of you suggested a region south of Rome. And when my buddy Rob was visiting me in Naples, uh, met me, and then we traveled up to Rome, we stopped uh, for a night and took a look at this place. And it was called, I believe, Isla de Liri. Uh, de, yeah, something like that. Um, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. But uh, it was really a beautiful area. It was incredible. It was this valley. It was a hilly area, kind of mountainous. And there was a, a town with a castle above it. And the river went around the castle and there's these waterfalls. And then the river formed this island down below and the city was there, a uh, really small little town. Uh, we happened to be there on a Sunday and it was incredible. They had the main street closed, tons of restaurants and bars. Everyone was out, everyone was super friendly, really beautiful, had an incredible atmosphere. Um, and there was even a property there I was interested in. Uh, I couldn't get a realtor to come show it to me on short notice, but uh, it was one of the sky to earth buildings. So it was all like four levels. It was almost like a tower, super cool. But after seeing the, that town in person, I immediately removed it from my list just because I guarantee it's going to flood. If not in the next few months, in the next few years, for sure. So I didn't want to deal with that. Um, and it's just because of these crazy extreme weather events that are happening and all around Italy everywhere I went everyone I talked to was talking about how the weather has been incredibly strange so when I was in Abruzzo uh, I talked to a winemaker and last year he lost 70 percent of his grapes to mold because it was an extremely wet spring and so everything 
um, molded and he, and he lost all of it, or 70%, I mean, almost all of it. Uh, and then towards the end of my trip in Piemonte, I stayed at an agriturismo. They were also winemakers. And they said this spring has been extremely wet and they showed us. I mean, you could go look at the grapes and you could see how they were part parts of it uh, were brown and not growing. So um, this was also due to a wet spring and mold. So they thinking, they're thinking they might be losing 25% to 30% of their grape production this year. So, I mean, that's incredible. That's, that's really amazing. And then a couple of years ago, they had a catastrophic hailstorm that wiped out one of their whole region, their areas. They had 16 hectares, I believe, of vineyards, and it wiped out a couple of hectares uh, where a particular grape was growing, so they couldn't make that wine that year. So, yeah, just really crazy extreme weather events, um, and that has been on my mind. When I was looking at properties and looking at regions and looking at areas, I was definitely thinking about uh, what's going to happen in the future. And as I was leaving in northern Italy, actually when I arrived, there was flooding when I arrived uh, in Friuli Venezia Giulia there was, and Veneto. There was a bunch of flooding uh, right when I was there. And then when I was leaving, going through Austria and Germany, every river I came by, I mean, it was filled to the very top. And of course, that's kind of typical in mountain areas because the snow's melting off and running off and you're gonna have a lot more runoff in the spring, so that's pretty normal. But um, it was incredible, and, and uh, you know, I just hope uh, more people aren't affected by this extreme weather. But uh, anyway, so I wanna talk a little bit about that before I showed you this property. That doesn't have anything to do with this particular property other than the fact that it's in Piemonte, in the Piedmont, which is where uh, this flooding happened this past week. So take a look at this property, and then uh, I'll be back in a minute and tell you what I thought about it. Okay, we're here at the second location, and uh, you can see it's kind of similar with the balcony running around, two levels. Um, this one does not have a view like the other one did, though. This is kind of in between. Uh, across the street, you can kind of see, you know, this uh, building here, and then the street runs down over here both ways. But uh, it does have some beautiful sunlight, and uh, actually I'm kind of roasting in my riding gear right now. But, um, so this is the door you come in to the courtyard. And then there's like a little uh, storage room here. There's no garage. So there's no garage and no view with this property. Um, so those are a couple big ones, but this is kind of a storage area. And, um, you know, you could park a motorcycle under here uh, and it's secure. So it would be out of the weather, put a cover on it, doors locked. That's as good as a garage as far as I'm concerned. So that's kind of a nice place to park the motorcycle. It does have a private courtyard with a garden. Um, and then, yeah, this is the main entrance right here. We'll walk through the beautiful beads. And um, to the left here is like a, just a little, could be a really small office, or Paolo was saying maybe turn it into a, um, like a toilet, just a half bath for the, for the ground floor. Um, and then this is the kitchen. So you can see it's pretty, pretty basic, but uh, you know, it's Italian, so I'm guessing that's an espresso maker. <laughs> kind of dark in here, maybe you can't see it, but uh, yeah, so you have this, and then there's this little nook here where the sink is, which is pretty unique and kind of a storage back in there. I don't know if you can see, but um, so you know, pretty, pretty small room, so that's the first thing I'm feeling when I come in here. Um, so, and then this is, you know, like a diet formal dining room or something, I guess. But, uh, you know, that wouldn't be, I don't know, I'd use it as a living room probably. But let's go upstairs. So we head upstairs here. And to the left is kind of a, I don't know, sitting area, hallway. And then this is the main bathroom here. So it does have a nice big shower which is something I appreciate for sure, because I've been trying to shower in, in these little tiny casket showers. Like my, my buddy Rob, when we were in Naples, uh, he's, he's got bigger shoulders than I do, and he, he was trying to shower in that thing. So, okay, little tiny, tiny bedroom. I mean, really small, barely fits that in there. Um, then there's a sink here, which is kind of interesting. But you come out here onto the balcony, and uh, 
really beautiful area out here, a little sitting area over there in the sun. Uh, again, no view of like the hillsides, but you do get an incredible view of the castle right up there. And the neighbors have a beautiful garden, a couple of palm trees and some more landscaping that's really nice. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible. Um, and let's see, so then you, there's a little wall or door here, or there's a door on the other end of the room, but this is being used as a bedroom. Uh, again, could be a living room. But look at these beautiful original um, brick floors. And then uh, this is the last bedroom. So again, pretty small, um, no window on the back walls but there's this, this window here into the courtyard, or onto the street, so there'd be some road noise there maybe. Um, but I mean, it's, it's not like there's a lot of traffic here, so you can see there's the road there, the road there, and it's, uh, I don't think it's one of, the, one of the main roads, but you can see there is a car coming right now. So, um, yeah, and then, this, this is going back through that other door. So this is the door we came upstairs to, and back into this room here. So the one other thing that this place does have is it's got a huge attic that could be turned into a bedroom, bathroom, or whatever if you really needed it. But here, I'll show you that. And um, so just off the balcony here, you come out those doors, and there's the courtyard. And you come in here, and then yeah, there's this huge balcony up here, or a huge um, attic. So I'll just try this ladder. I guess it's probably okay. But um, Paula did say that the roof here is in good condition. Although I'm looking and I can see light coming through up there. I don't know if that's a good thing. I would generally say no, but uh, didn't really see any water damage inside and looks all right. So. Um, you know, maybe have it checked out, but uh, just a little utility room down below here. And I think this must be that main bedroom, the back of that wall. So, and then back out here in the courtyard. So, you know, kind of obviously really chopped up, a bunch of little tiny small rooms. Uh, probably not my, not my cup of tea, but, and actually Paula even said that. She said, I don't think this one's for you, but after you look at it, then it will help you decide what would be more something to your liking. Uh, so yeah, really nice. Uh, I think that was a great way to think about it. And um, yeah, so there you go. Second property in the Piemonte region, close to Asti, Asti Spumanti, if you've heard of that. So, um, okay, there we go. Okay, one more thing. Uh, there is a cellar here too. So just from the courtyard, right by the front door, there's the beads and coming down the stairs here. Then there's this cellar, which <laughs> is pretty cool. I mean, it's just this area, so it's not huge. But check it out. These tanks are made for wine. I mean, who would have this much wine in a little house like this? Do they have a like truck come and pump this thing full? They must, I guess. Uh, that's incredible. And then these wooden barrels here. I mean, I get it, we're in Piedmont, the wine region, but this little tiny house would have this huge wine? And then this barrel here. I don't know if you can see it. The size of this thing. Wow. Yeah, so, um, little bonus room in the cellar would be for some storage or something like that, but uh, I think that's, uh, that's it, you know. Not my cup of tea, as I mentioned before, but uh, wow, what a cool place. And I, I don't remember how much this one was. It's about the same, like 40, 45,000 euros maybe. So it wasn't an incredible amount, but uh, you know, I think for this price, could definitely get more. And there's one, in fact, I want to look at uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be get a chance to see that uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so what did you guys think of that place? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we're on the same page here. Uh, definitely not for me. Um, 
didn't have a garage. Uh, kind of could have made one out of that little area in the corner. I it had a part, part where I could park a motorcycle or I could take out that wall and turn it into a garage. Um, but also the rooms were quite small. Um, didn't really have a view, no patio. So it didn't have a lot of the things that, that I'm looking for. And you know, it's funny, Paula, actually she told me, she's like, I don't think this is the place for you. Um, but it, it was a great one to look at just to know what you don't want. You know, that's kind of just as important as f knowing what you do want. So, um, and it was quite expensive and, um, you know, there's quite a bit of remodeling going on there. So, um, so yeah, definitely that one's not for me, but, uh, again, it's all a learning process and it's a great experience to get out there and see properties. Um, so to that point, I want to talk a little bit about the video from last week. Um, really across the board response. It was incredible. A lot of, a lot of different opinions. Uh, a lot of people mentioned that the roof was a, a, a deal breaker. Cause if you have to replace that, it'd be too expensive. And I agree. I don't want to deal with that. Um, other places, other people thought there would be a ton of remodeling and, and I didn't really see that. I mean, I thought a little bit of paint and, um, you know, the windows I think were okay. I have to redo the kitchen, but that's kind of actually preferential for me because a lot of the kitchens I see are not ones that I'd ever want. So I'd get to build it the way I want. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was okay. You know, uh, the small windows, that's kind of a bummer, uh, cause the view was spectacular, but I did like that you could see the view from the rooms, you know, you didn't have to go up on the rooftop to see the view. So, um, you know, that's maybe a little hint of what's to come in another video, but, um, yeah, so yeah, it was great. Lots of great feedback. Um, so I appreciate that. I love all the comments. I read every single one. Uh, I've been kind of slow to responding to them. So I'm going to actually today or tomorrow go and, and respond to each comment and, and let you know, um, uh, how I feel about those. Um, but, uh, please keep them coming. I really appreciate it. Um, what was there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Okay, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I've gotten quite a few comments of people asking what's the name of the uh, US based company that helps you go through the process of buying a place. And I haven't listed it or mentioned it on purpose. Uh, my reason is that I haven't used their services and I don't know how good they are, and so I don't want to it to look like I'm endorsing them or saying that uh, I think you should use their services. So those of you that have asked comments about or posted comments asking what's the name of the company, I suggest you just do a, do a search and then kind of do some of your own background work with them because uh, I can't speak to their quality. Uh, they seemed really nice. I, I talked to uh, one, of the, one of the people there and they seemed really nice and they did give me a couple of references which I haven't checked yet because I'm kind of waiting to decide if I'm going to use their services. But if I do use their services, absolutely 100%, I will let you know their name and I'll give you my honest opinion. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat anything. I'll tell you exactly how my experience has been uh, with them if I choose to use them. But because I haven't, that's why I haven't let, let you guys know what the name is yet. But uh, I think that's about it for this week. Uh, next week, we've got a really good one. I'm excited about this one. Um, We've got some news coming up maybe too. So anyway, thank you so much for following along. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for posting comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, there's a subscribe button down here. Uh, click on my little face and wait, maybe it's over here, over here, over here. I'm going to put it in both corners. Maybe anyway, subscribe and uh, keep following along. It's getting close. I might be finding someplace pretty soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, you guys. Thank you.